Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Guidewell Insights Lounge. We're here on location at the, at the Oliver Wyman Health Innovation Summit, and my name is Kate Warnock. I'm so glad to have our next guest with us, Mr. David Holmberg. David, welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. We're happy to have you. So David's title is he's the president and CEO of Highmark Health, as well as the chairman of the board of Highmark Incorporated. All right, let's get right into your questions, David. Sure. David, at the summit, we're discussing what's next for health plans. It's a big theme. I think Highmark's newly announced neighborhood hospitals in the Pittsburgh area are a great example of a payer looking forward. Can you give us the details? Sure. About four years ago, uh, we made the decision to, to become a payer provider uh, integrated delivery and finance system. And so with that, you know, we said we didn't want to be like everybody else. We wanted to build you know, something that was different, customer focused, that could really start to change how healthcare is being delivered, make it more affordable, and get better outcomes. So one of the ways we're doing that is we announced about a week ago uh, that we'll be building four neighborhood hospitals with uh, partnering with Amaris from uh, from Houston. Okay. And you know, and and what'll happen is is we're bringing healthcare closer to the front lines. I mean, if you think about it, it's very similar to a field hospital strategy that the military will use. And so we have um, in in our city center, we have um, a very strong high acuity sites where we can take care of the, the sickest of the sick. But you know, most healthcare today is being driven by chronic disease, it's sure. being driven by a, a variety of things. And if we can build a capability that's in the neighborhoods, it's a better experience, it's the beginning of what we consider retail healthcare, where we start to change the game and make it more affordable, uh, lower cost sites. We'll be able to keep people overnight if they need an infusion, if they need observation, uh, and then you know, and then keep them, you know, combine this with primary care capabilities, and all of a sudden you've got a site that can take care of your primary care needs, can do tests, can do imaging and can see an emergency 24-7, seven, seven days a week. And you really must know the needs of that population because you're right there in the neighborhoods with them, aren't you? Well, that's the beauty of Highmark Health because, you know, I mean, we are. And, you know, because we have um, over 5 million health care uh, insured, mm -hmm. you know, we have a history of, you know, of what kind of things that we see from that particular neighborhood and that community. So we'll match up uh, specialty services like oncology or orthopedics and other things, women's services with the demand in the area. Okay. So it's much more precision medicine, you know, from the standpoint. And really a smart a smart allocation of your resources as well because when you know what's needed, you're maybe not overfunding something that's not going to be utilized. Absolutely. I mean, you know, we see people who are, are continuing to double down on the high cost city center, you know, sites. And, and that's great for a certain uh, portion of the population, but for the majority of the people, we have to figure out how to deliver health care you know, that's more affordable so sure. that employers you know, continue to, to provide opportunities, so that they don't outsource jobs, and that we find ways to maybe make it easier for customers to interact and patients to interact with the health care system. All right. Terrific. Well, I think this is going to really resonate with you. I'm going to talk to you now about social determinants of health. Um, you know, it's something that we can no longer ignore as we move towards value-based care. So, how does being an integrated payer and provider help you better understand and meet the needs of all you serve? Well, I, first of all, you know, we're very cognizant of the social determinants of health, and, and Highmark Health, in addition to, um, you know, the Blue Cross Blue Shield, um, you know, organization, and, you know, with our provider system, the Allegheny Health Network, we see people and we have insights that maybe some others don't because you know because we're seeing both sides of what's happening in, in communities you know we see them in the emergency rooms we see what's happening in general right. and a lot of the of um, the cost of health care and and the way people are taking care of themselves is driven driven by social determinants so uh, we think it's very very important to find ways to start to address that we have a pilot that we're doing with um, with several of the foundations in Pittsburgh along with our our provider system where we're going to go into neighborhoods and try to create a holistic approach to not just health care but jobs, education, safety and some of the things that are driving the cost. Sure, that's wonderful. Really get at the root causes of it. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, a little pivot for you and this will be our sure. final question, David. You know, so you oversee an organization of over, and this is a number I've found, you tell me if it's accurate, 40,000 employees? That's correct. And you serve nearly 50 million Americans. Um, nationwide, so very, you know, an enormous workforce. How are you preparing these employees for the disruption we anticipate from both cutting-edge technology and the consumers who demand that care be more personalized? 
Well, first of all, um, we had to reset the organization. You know, it really was a matter of, of it had to be, it, it, could not, it could no longer be about us, it had to be about them, the people that we serve, whether it be our patients, our insured members, the, cl you know, the clients, the employers. We had to find ways to solve problems that, you know, that they had and, you know, and start to address those. And so what that means is we had to change our culture. Mm -hmm. And our culture had to start to recognize the fact that um, health care the way it is structured today is not sustainable. I mean, we have to have a different model. And you combine that with um, the, the advancements in speed to market that technology is bringing, you needed a new set of skills. Right. So where we started with, you know, really focusing on the core behaviors of all of our people, you know, we started focusing on uh, things like uh, critical thinking skills mm -hmm. and you know, empowering people to make decisions and helping them understand that when they make a good decision, how to build on that, and when they make a decision that doesn't work, how to quickly course correct, learn from it, and move forward. So speed of decision making, um, where you know where the action you know is, and, and moving closer to the customers has become right. really really important. Right. And that's all about changing you know, culture. It's about changing uh, the skill sets that you recruit for. Used to be insurance companies, you know, aggregated risk and paid claims. Now you got to do more than that. Right. And so, you know, so um, when you're aggregate, aggregating risk, you tend to be risk adverse. Right. Now we need people that are comfortable with uncertainty, uncomfortable with a little bit of chaos, and when presented with opportunities like uh, what's happening in the market today with some of the mergers and consolidations, mm -hmm. aren't afraid of them, but instead move toward them and try to find ways right. to take advantage right. of them. Well, and in the meantime, you're also making your whole system more efficient and accountable, which Absolutely. is really what, what's, uh, you know, if that's a disruptor, uh, that's one that we all are looking for, isn't it? Absolutely. So, all right. Well, David, thank you so much for spending your time with us here in the Guidebell Insights Lounge. We're happy to have had you. My name is Kate Warnock. Thank you so much for watching.